Have you ever woke up with unexplained scratches on your body, bruises, and there's just no explanation for it? Nine times out of 10, it's because of some sort of supernatural activity, some sort of evil spirit or demon. And as crazy as that sounds, understand that we are spirit beings having a natural experience. The spirit realm is more real than a natural realm. An indicator of that and an example of that is when you think about a dead body and how people leave behind their shell. The body is just a shell and their soul and their spirit was the life of them. Yesterday morning, my daughter, I was getting her ready for school and she said out of nowhere, she's like, ouch. I looked and she had three scratches going across her back and it was in an odd place. And I knew I was like, this must be some sort of attack because I used to experience that all the time. I would wake up and I would have scratches and it would always be like three, like I was clawed or something, like someone dig their nails in me and it would happen multiple times. So I looked around her bed to see if there was anything that would cause any of these scratches and there was nothing, just blankets and pillows. I prayed over the house and I prayed over my children then this morning, again, we wake up and she has scratches on her, but this time it's her arm. I'm like, what is going on? And then last night, <clears throat> I had a dream that I was outside and it was dark and it looked like it could have been like a alleyway or some sort of dead end road. And you know, when there is a light post and the only light that's lighting up the street is the light from the light post in the the midst of the darkness and the, the light post i saw it looked like it was a homeless person but this homeless person it was a black figure and it was kind of like taunting me like you know doing like a dance like a clown and trying to chase after me and I just remember like running to get away from it, but it was like taunting me. So when I woke up, I knew that that represented some sort of spiritual activity or some sort of spiritual warfare that is in my midst or in my presence. What I try to do is I try to pray over my atmosphere. And that's something that you can do. You can pray over your atmosphere and you can pray over yourself. You can ask God for protection to, to cover you. So that's what I did. And you can also get like some olive oil, but you can't just throw, you know, olive oil around because then it's just basically like you're, you know, throwing around some chicken grease. You have to pray over it and anoint it so that it has its power and it's effective. And so you have those types of spiritual activity where the powers of darkness tries to come up against you and usually when you experience these scratches on your body or these markings it's basically like the enemy trying to mark his territory but that doesn't mean that he has power no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper however these scriptures are not as effective if you're walking in darkness so you you have to put on the whole armor of god i have a video here on youtube explaining what that means because we hear that we hear a lot about warfare and spiritual warfare but we don't actually know what the tools are because god has given us tools in order to combat the enemy but a part of the um putting on the whole armor of god is actually righteousness so you have to be righteous you have to be in right standing with god doesn't mean that you're going to be perfect but it's about striving for perfection and striving to do the right thing and being in god because when you're out of god you're out of his protection how can we expect him to cover us and keep us and protect us if we have chosen to walk outside of his will again it, it doesn't mean that you're going to be perfect but it's like even when you stumble you are still stumbling forward and you're still trying to get it right. It's about trying, you know, and, and being on that path of righteousness. It's, it's about that path. The enemy, he tries to send his little devices, but he is like a lion with no teeth. 
and so he tries to do things like that like where you know he tries to mark your your body and it's really just um a tactic to bring fear because the powers of darkness feed off of fear and they feed off of just negativity and so whenever there's an atmosphere of negativity or uh fear fearful energy that's what it's feeding off of so it's like it's just to, to create fear and also it's basically the enemy trying to let you know and, and make his presence known but even when we can't see there is darkness and a lot of times the power of god and the holy spirit is protecting us from that darkness so you have that you have where the enemy tries to mark your body and and, and put scratches on you and all of that and then you have sleep paralysis i used to deal with this a lot and this is the world's definition of basically spiritual warfare and so my experiences with sleep paralysis was i would have a, a crazy dream or something or even if i'm not dreaming about anything i just would try to wake up out of my sleep and it's like i'm caught in between uh, sleep and my my subconscious mind and my conscious mind is like I'm I'm stuck in between that place and that's like this that's basically like the spirit realm it's like something is trying to stop me from breathing or something would try to stop me from speaking and I remember like the first experience that I had with that was when um, I was about I was a teenager and I was trying to I didn't know what, what was happening and I and I was trying to say mm, I was trying to say mommy <laughs> I was trying to call my mother suddenly it just kicked in and, and I remember to call on the name of Jesus because there's power in the name of Jesus whether you like it or not whether you believe it or not there's power in his name and so I called on the name of I, it took me a little while and I'm like J -j 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 -j, you know Jesus and I said it and it went away and then I, I woke up that's happened multiple times and I remember I used to struggle so badly with anxiety those demons or those evil spirits would feed off of that and I remember because it was happening I would be so afraid and I would just have so much anxiety my heart rate would be up when I would wake up but because I started to understand throughout my life that there's power in the name of Jesus and I have power and authority over these demons. When I call on the name of Jesus, then when I would speak his name, it will go away. So the more I started to do that, the less I started to be afraid. It says in God's word that perfect love casts out all fear. And when you know that God loves you and that he cares about you and he's with you and you speak the name of Jesus, and you know that you can have faith in God, then that's when the enemy can't do the same thing anymore. He can't use the same tactics anymore. When those experiences would happen later on in life with me, I wouldn't be afraid anymore. And I would, it, it'll happen, but it's, it's almost like it wasn't even working because I'm like, oh, another one of these. And I'm like, J -j Jesus, and then it'll go away and I'll go back right back to sleep. It started to happen less because the enemy can't keep doing what doesn't work. When it started to work and I started to be less afraid because it couldn't feed off that energy of fear and anxiety anymore, then he couldn't keep doing that. And so he stopped messing with me. Now he knows not to mess with me. Now he tries to come in other ways and that's how he does. He knows and he studies our weaknesses. No weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. And you got to know that. And you have to put on the whole armor of God. And that includes righteousness so if you're experiencing sleep paralysis there's another level that you got to get to to where you believe it in your heart and you profess with your mouth and believe it in your heart that god is able to drive back the powers of darkness and that's something that i pray all the time like lord drive back every power of darkness cover me from the top of my head to the soles of my feet cover my children you know um remove any evil spirits i'm i'm praying against astral projection i'm praying against witchcraft all of that and there's times when the holy spirit will wake you up at three o'clock in the morning four o'clock in the morning and it's really that spiritual time because even witches wake up at that time and they do their thing because they know that's a very significant time and 
I don't know if it's because people are sleeping and it's the the world is a little bit more still and it's not as busy as it is any other time but that is such a significant time and if the holy spirit is waking you up it's important to just come to yourself and really start to pray even if you're tired there's times when i am so exhausted but i know that the holy spirit is waking me up to pray it seems like it's even more powerful when it's at that time especially when the holy spirit is, is leading you to do that so a few months ago i was scrolling through my phone and there was an image in my phone of me and i for the life of me had no idea where this image came from how or who took the picture so basically i was asleep and it was a live photo that was taken of me at 3 3 a.m and i still have not cracked the case i still haven't figured out the mystery i'm not 100 percent sure who took this picture it was only myself and my children and no one else has access to my place i asked my kids first of all first of all my kids were in school when i found this photo so i was going through it honestly i was like well god who took this picture and it was hideous <laughs> so not only was it hideous but it was scary because i was asleep and i just i didn't know that that picture was taken and i i didn't know who took it because i'm like why would my kids take a picture of me at three o'clock in the morning when they're asleep and that's that's the time that they're usually out of it you know i couldn't wait for them to get home i was like i'm not I'm like should i call the school to figure out who took this picture and it wasn't so much about the way i looked it was the fact that i had no clue who took the photo that's scary if somebody takes a picture of you and you don't even know who took the picture in your sleep it was very scary to me and i felt very vulnerable and so when i when my kids came home i questioned them. i'm like i'm like did you take this picture did you take this picture and my daughter azzy she's very playful and i asked her i'm like azzy did you take this picture and she said i she woke up to, she said she did wake up to use the bathroom i have a passcode mind you I believe she does know it, but I'm not sure. And I just couldn't understand why would she wake up at three something in the morning to take a picture of me and and go through the hassle to put in my passcode to take a picture of me. She never really said that she did it. You know, she's like, I took a picture with her 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 play camera, but she never said that she took it with my phone. So I just I really didn't understand where this picture came from but the point i'm trying to make is that there is spiritual activity going on around us all the time a lot of times it's just beyond our knowledge and god has put a place a veil over our eyes so that we're protected and we can't necessarily see but some people have the gift to see in the spiritual realm and they're able to see and sometimes when you draw closer to god he will start to show you things as well. I don't know who took this picture, but I also had to pray about that as well because that it is possible that an evil spirit could have done that. There's plenty of stories of people having encounters like this. And it doesn't matter if it's in the church, it doesn't matter if it's at your house, there's spiritual activity going on all around. And that's why it's important to cover yourself. It's important to pray. It's important to anoint your head with oil. God has given us tools for us to uh, combat the enemy's devices and his tactics. And that's the way we're protected. The things that are about to happen and take place in this world are unfortunately about to get worse. But the only people who are covered are the ones who are in him but it's not about going to church and going through these religious motions it's about having a personal relationship with god where you are in the secret place it says in psalms 91 he that dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty and then it also says that i will trust in him and he is my refuge so it's important for us to put our faith and trust in god and allow him to cover and protect us it's important to not just go through religious motions because you won't have any power you're going to keep having these 
attacks of the enemy if it's not personal to you no one else can believe for you you have to believe for yourself and you have to have a personal relationship with god and have your own personal convictions so it's really about you dwelling in him understanding his nature communing with him it's not about you congregating amongst the practitioners of the faith it's about you having a personal relationship outside of the congregants and really leaning in on your faith personally intimately and allowing him to have his perfect work in your life so let me pray with you guys dear heavenly father lord anybody who is watching this who has stumbled across this video lord i just ask that you would just touch them right now by the power of your holy spirit i thank you god that even though the enemy has tactics and even though sometimes we open doors and portals to allow the enemy to give legal right and legal access to us lord i just ask that you will close every portal and every gateway of the enemy god and i just ask that you would just help people to allow you to enter into their space in their dwelling place and lord i just ask that you would keep a hedge of protection god even as i speak these words even as i decree and i declare this word over your people lord i just ask that they would feel your presence even right now even right now god wrap your loving arms around them god lord let them realize and understand that you are greater and you are more powerful than the enemy and that you are still seated on the throne and that as long as they're in you, that they are protected and that you will cover them and that you're still a good God, even though you allow evil. But Lord, I just thank you that you make everything work together for your good. God, I just thank you, God, for just covering your people. I thank you, Lord, for protecting them. I thank you, Lord, for bringing peace to their atmosphere, bringing peace to their life in the name of Jesus. Amen.